good evening everyone so we'll be learning inner queries today and to learn that i'll be explaining the tables first we'll understand the data associated with those tables and based on that we'll be bringing that into action by knowing how to write a inner query and why do we need it and what's the result out of it okay so to understand that let me take an excel sheet first to and to explain you people about this i'll be taking student table first i'll be explaining the fields in it then i'll be taking the books table and then the borrower table let me open this okay it's open okay so the first table which i'll be taking is the student table student table will have the id which is a unique number for example the name of the student semester in which he is studying he or she is studying and the branch i'll go with a very simple table and i'll be taking some sample data i'll be calling them with a b c d e z okay and semester everyone let's assume that they are belonging to the semester second and the branch what they are studying in Did it. Now, if I consider the library, library will have books, so I'll be taking that in the second one. They are nowhere related. Books is the second table. what is this books will be having it will be having a unique identifier as isbn uh, you might have heard about this a unique identifier for that book then i'll be taking to which branch it belongs to okay after the branch i'll be taking the name of the book author of the book okay and name author and the subject to which belongs let's go with subject i'll be taking this one isbn 1 underscore 1 and i'll be taking three books <clears throat> the branch everything belongs to cs i'll call the first one as programming in c programming in c++ programming in java let's go with sql okay. and i'll be adding one more here something called publisher the author <coughs> i'll go with john bob and mark publisher two of them are done by tata and one is done from pearson so this is the books what we have now comes the actual table where it is required for the inner queries 
So I'll call this one as borrower. Borrower will have the student ID, the book ISBN, date of issue, date of return, actual return date. Okay. And here it will be the penalty fee if applicable. So let's take an example that I everyone knows that every student might not be uh, taking the books from the library. So these are the books available. These are the students. Let's take the student one. One is the student who has taken IS bn underscore one date of issue date of issue for now just ignore it because we are not working on the date date part i'll say just as not applicable as of now okay so this is my table now now when we have this data we want to know we want to know the output from only one table or we want to fetch data from only one table and the output what we are expecting is the name of the student who has taken the book from the library that is the borrower table understand the scenario here very important the scenario is we don't want to display the student name and the book name we want to just display the student name if they have borrowed the book do we have that student name in this table? No. We don't have the student name in this table. We don't have the borrowing information in the student table. <coughs> now, what do you want to display based on that? You will decide whether to go with joins or inner queries. Why is that we are going with inner query now? We want to display only the name of that student if and only if they have borrowed the book this is the data now let me prepare the data for this using queries so to do that i'll go back to this and i'll be creating it in. so make an habit of practicing this uh, not only in a queries by preparing some data like this okay so based on this i'll go with inner query and i'll be creating all the from this scratch, create database inner query and I'll drop that database if already exists. Drop now after doing this, I need to use it. The command use is all related to database. Now I need to create a table, create table student. Whenever I write the table names, it should be in lowercase student. Exactly the same way we'll be having books. And then comes the borrower table, which is very important. If you people have missed a session on uh, constraints, which is primary key, foreign key, up to my knowledge, I've not explained it. I'll be explaining it in tomorrow's session. But today, just concentrate that we have student table, books table, and the borrower table. For the student table, I'll be having the ID, the name, the semester, and then the branch. Correct? That's what we are taking. So let me go here. So student table has ID, name, semester, and branch. That's perfect. For this one, I'll be taking this copy. And for the borrower table, we'll be taking this. Perfect. So for the ID, it should be an integer and it will be primary key. What is primary key? Uh, primary key is a constraint which will make it to be unique 
even if you try to place a duplicate value it won't allow and it won't even allow you to have a blank value no duplicates no blank value unique identifier semester branch all the three belongs to the type character up to 60 and they are not null by default i want to have some value which is by default i want it to be this. okay now semester belongs to the type integer and by default it should be having the value 2 branch will will be only three digits character so i'll go with three and this will be cse name we need to mention it mandatory so this is the primary key and it should be auto incremented so i'll go with auto increment so let me copy this entire thing so it won't work why i need to log in first mysql minus u minus t and then let us go with one perfect <clears throat> now i'll go with one table first one I think it's auto increment keyword. Auto increment. We can apply it for numbers. It worked. Perfect. How many students have taken here? I have taken almost six students, I guess. Yes. I need to just fill the names. Insert into insert into student values because remaining things are going with the default value mention the name of the column or the field which you are specifying and then this one two three four five six b c d e and F. then select star from student hope you people are now familiar with this because we are using it from day one perfect this is my student student list now i'll move on with the next table isbn which should be a character up to 25 and this will be treated as the primary key branch which is of character 3 not null and by default i want it to be csc because i don't want to insert it comma next one the name of the book character 60 author publisher and the subject Author is mandatory. Author name. So you need to mention not null if it is a mandatory call. Publisher is mandatory. So I'll go with character 60. Whenever I say mandatory, remember that we need to mention not null. subject is character up to 100 and it is optional field 
I'll go with this. So we have uh, the table ISBN, which is of character 25 primary key, branch not null by default CSE, name, author, publisher, and the one which is mandatory, I'll be just going. Okay. Now we have the book not null default CSE. It is showing an error in the primary key because of the spelling. Okay. If you read the error, you'll know it. It is clearly showing you the primary key here. Okay. Okay. Now we have two tables ready, but there is no relationship between them at all. Books is totally isolated from. Now I need to insert values. Insert into student values. Preferably, I would suggest you people to watch the video and type it because you'll be familiar. Now, what is that I need to insert? I need to insert ISBN because it is not auto increment. I need to specify the name of the book. A branch will be taken by default. I need to specify the author, comma, and then the publisher. Now the values what I'll be inserting is ISBN, character single quotes, name, and after that the author, and then the publisher. So this is the one. So the name of the book as we have seen it, that is ISBN underscore one. The name of the book, I'll copy paste it, author, we know that I'm repeating it. Author is John. And then the publisher, publisher will be done. So be, as I mentioned, I'll be having only three books. Book ISBN two and then three. Then C plus plus. Then it is SQL. Written by John, Bob, and Mark. Published by Pearson. Done. So we have all these uh, details of the book. Select start from. The plural format always best practice. Field list ISBN name, author, publisher. Okay, programming in C, C, ISBN one, two, three. Everything looks great here, but I'm wondering what is the error. Unknown column name ISPN. How come? Let me describe books table. ISBN is already there. ISPN is also there. Correct. <clears throat> Okay, the reason is I need to go with books table. I've mentioned it as student table. Now, let me try. Okay, I have the books, I have the student information. Now we need to build this table. This is very important table. As I mentioned, I'll be taking up a session tomorrow on primary key and foreign key uniquely on that. But today just concentrate on the columns and how do I make it to happen with the data. Okay. 
so now we have book id this is the student id in the table we call it as id to make it simpler and easier i'll go with i'm just changing the column name but it doesn't change anything else then it is book underscore isbn column names should not have the space best practice separate it by underscore so that it is easy for reading column names table names preferably no spaces okay penalty fee penalty fee will be in int and by default it will be zero coming to this one student id should be the exact data type that is int okay and in this case it will be treated as a foreign key means if it is present in student then only it should be allowing it to be here so book isbn it will be of character 25 it cannot be null because it is mandatory two things then comes date of issue i'll go with date data type and it will be null for this time date with null null means it allows blank value that's it but i had specified this column should copy the data or it should allow the data coming from the student table this column should allow the data coming from books table only then it should allow so to do that we need to create a foreign key column so i'll go with f o r e i g n foreign key i'll mention the column name it references it's a key this is syntax references which table this refers the student table and in that it is trying to refer the column called id comma the current table has a column name called student id this is treated as a foreign key means student table is primary key in borrowed table it is foreign key exactly same way we need to go with book isbn and this is referring to books table and the column name is isbn let me try to create this table and i'll be inserting the value you have a syntax near this check the references uh foreign key student id references student id foreign key student id references once again it is giving in error you have student id foreign key so foreign key my sql sql constraint and the syntax one or two flower packets is missing what i think so this is my foreign key personal id this is the key perfect references this is perfect let me go with the round bracket student id student table let me try with this
you have an SQL check the manual for the corresponding MySQL server version of the right syntax to use near null. It is giving an error this not null, not null, 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 and null. It is trying to throw an error near null penalty fee, penalty fee int null with the default value. Have I missed anything? It is throwing an error near the single quotes. I'm just wondering with that. Is it because of the space? I'm not sure. Student ID is not null, book ISBN not null, date of issue date, date of written date. I'm still wondering. At line seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is where it is showing an error. And now let us. Yes, there was an error in this syntax. Date of issue, date of return, actual return date. All the three are date. I'm just wondering with this space. So now I'll just ignore this. Uh, we'll be creating it later. Now I'll play some value here. Insert into borrower values. It should insert two columns. One is called as student ID, comma the books ISBN. Student ID is one, the book ISBN is ISBN underscore one. This should insert if any data which is not matched, for example, 10 student doesn't exist, comma, one is the student, but there is no book matching to it. For example, 10. First one should be inserted because there is a student one, there is a book one. But if I try to insert this, it should not allow because it is acting as a foreign key. And here it should be ISBN. From the books. Referring to book ISBN. Drop the table. Perfect. It got created. Now I'll insert this value. It should be inserted. If I try to insert this, there is no student with ID 10. It should not allow. No. For our IBFK1 foreign key student ID references student ID, it doesn't work. There is a student one, but there is no book. Book ISPN. You can see this error. Pause it, read it, and then we'll move on. So we have only one book for our as of now. Select star from forward. Now comes your actual thing which we want to learn. Inner query. 
we have student table we will have borrower table and the books table now i want to fetch the student names who have borrowed the book select star from student this is the table we know the output of this where id in 1 2 6 8 10 what is the output of this one if i go with only this one it will try to display all the student details perfect if i try to go with a query like this which has mentioning some of the list of ids in the round bracket will get in 1 3 6 8 10 6810 is not present 1 3 is there 6 is there 8 and 10 there is no matching value so it won't that's fine but what is inner query to understand inner query let me select start from borrower first i'll execute this query and we know the result of this it is showing the student id book isbn forget about the remaining fields as of now if i try to display the same query with where student id in 10,1,3,4,5,6,7,8 it will check for these id if it is present in the borrow table it will display now let's take this i want to display the student details if they have borrowed the book so you have to write select the student id column the from borrow table so what is the execution order it will run this query you will get the id 1 or more than 1 this query will execute first it will bring the result 1 and this in 1 will be displayed from the student table so let me copy this according to the execution engine this is the outer query we are writing inner query to fetch only the student ids let me copy this paste it and enter now what you see is the name of the student or the details who has borrowed the book exactly same way i want to display the one who have not borrowed the books at all so you have to go with not in keyword in will display the values not in except that can you see one student name a has borrowed the book 2 3 4 5 6 have not borrowed the book because of this not keyword okay now you might be wondering how to fetch how to know the books which have been borrowed which is not been borrowed very simple select star from books table where isbn in the current table is present in in keyword coming from the query select book isbn column from the borrower table execute the query inner one first and it will display you the this is the only book which has been borrowed i want to know the books which are not borrowed then you have to go with the same query but using the keyword not now we'll know the books which is not been borrowed at all these are the two books which is not been borrowed these are the books which are not been borrowed <coughs> so now before i end the session i would like to show you people 
when to use the join i want to display the student name book name and the author name from these dates okay this is where joins is required the last query what i am explaining is joins because this will make you people very clear about when to use the join i want to display the student name the book name and the author the one who have purchased it means borrowed it so what should be the output it should be a along with the book name and the author name so if i want to display like this we need to go with join i want to display the name of the student the name of the book and the author of the book these are the three things i want to display and if i want to bring the data from two tables i need to have whom first i need to match the student with the borrower table so i'll take student table inner join with borrower table borrower table has to be going with inner join this is three table join inner join with the books table now what is that we need to match on the condition that student table id must be matched with the borrower table dot student id these are the two columns and it should match borrower tables book isbn that is book isbn should be matched with books table isbn now the confusion starts for the query because name is repeated i'll resolve it name is ambiguous so the first one is coming from the student table as student name this is aliasin name which is the second one which is coming from the book table and this time this will be representing the column name as book name why we are doing this because the name is common in two tables or three tables we want to clearly rectify that this is the column coming from this table it is selling book dot name is not known because it should be books actually book itself is not known to so now let me copy this when you want to display from multiple tables now you can see the actual name of the column is just modified for the display purpose student name is a book name is programming in c author name is john good now the request is you should know the difference between inner queries and the joins joins when you want to display columns from multiple tables inner join inner queries are nothing but you want to display data from one table but there is a condition or the values which represents in the other table if it is matched you display it from one table make sense so all the queries you can just pause it you people can just type it but i'll be sharing it for sure so with this today's training is done if you people have questions let me know thank you